Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back um, to Town Tailgate Podcast. That's Julio. I'm Chris. Hey. Time for some winners and losers from the deadline because we had the absolute most wild deadline that I have ever experienced in my lifetime that I can remember. I mean, there, dude, Julio, there was deals. It was like starting at six in the morning. And it didn't end until 10 o'clock at night. And there was at least a deal, at least one deal every hour of the day. Like, it, and, and then like around like noon and one, you're talking like three or four deals an hour. Like, and for three, for 24 straight hours, it was insane. Like, I remember like I was in Tahoe with my family because every year we do this like annual Tahoe trip to get together. And on Friday, like I'm interrupting like whatever my parents are doing like every like five minutes to just be like oh another trade oh another trade like it was just absolutely insane. It was a very uh, hard to be productive end of week in oh, between yeah. that and then uh, the NBA draft going on. Yeah. Or like oh the prospects like who's gonna get traded? It was very much like Twitter all the time. Um, but it Listeners, was awesome. Me and, me and Julio already text each other more or less all day, every day about sports. And like those particular days, it was just nonstop. Like every five minutes, there was a text from one of us. Now let's, uh, let's do our uh, hot, uh, hot take-ish segment, go our winners and losers. Uh, how we're going to do this is we'll each pick, pick three of each category to three winners, three losers. Um, I say, let's start it off with our winners first here. Uh, Chris, being the gentleman I am, you can go ahead and take the lead on this first one. Good, because uh, I was hoping you'd get me, because the winners are the A's. I'm telling you right now, for yes. all the reasons that we said in the last segment, the winners are the A's, because it. I think it showed these past couple seasons, in order to get to the World Series, you have to play this model, and that's the Dodger model. And that's get as much depth to get as much lineup versatility as possible. And right now, there is a whole lot. And a lot of people were calling for designating Stephen Piscotty for assignment or cutting him. No, no, that is not what you want to do. You want to keep the big bats in your lineup. Yeah, he's not going to get much playing time, but so what? I would rather have him in our lineup than Seth Brown or or uh, I forgot who the guy was that they sent down when Marte came up, the minor leaguer. I, who cares what his name is? Um, he was an infielder, I want to say. Jacob Wilson. Jacob Wilson. I would rather have Wilson. I'd rather have Stephen Piscotty because Stephen Piscotty's got a massive arm in the outfield. So I know that at the end of a game, if he comes in like the seventh, eighth, ninth inning, he's going to throw guys out. I know that he has experience in playoff games. So maybe his bat's not reliable, but you know that he's going to take the at bat a lot more seriously than these younger guys have been doing. I mean, no, you want that. You want that versatility. You want that experience in the lineup. You want that depth. You want guys you can trust. And right now, I trust. 99% of the guys in on this roster big time. And so the A's are fucking winners. And the reality is, I mean, we got one of the, the in, with Marte, we got one of the biggest guys available. So yeah, I feel like we deserve a win for that. No, absolutely. Um, I know a lot of people were really sad about getting rid of Lizardo. I know some people are already saying like, you're going to give him the hype. It's just like, he, does, he didn't have it this year. And like, this is of such a small window with this core now. And the last thing you want is to kind of end up with another sunny gray situation where it looks better in retrospective because we got James brilliant at it and she's on the IL right now, which we probably should have brought that But he's, he's going to be back this week though. Bob yeah, Bob but it's it like, wasn't serious. So he's going to think he's going to be back. Yeah. But like the last thing you want is to just have this really great pitcher on a non-competitive team. And then you're just kind of, and that trade brought us nothing. Oh, by the way, uh, Jorge Mateo got deified by the Padres. So it's like, great. Like, that just shows you that you really got shafted besides Caprillion. Um, but no, absolutely. I think Marte, uh, David Forrest kept saying Marte was, like, in their opinion, the best position player available. And fuck, in the first week, he's shown it, man. It's, he's been electric on the base pads. He's been electric with this glove. Um, even though today he, there was, I think it was, uh, I think it was that Grisham double where they scored a couple of runs off of it, where he's going to have to learn to play in the Coliseum. Whereas like you can tell he's kind of second guessing himself when he was like going up against the outfield wall. Whereas Ramon would have been like, Oh, cool. I get it. He'll learn that over time. And I think whatever struggles we're talking about right now and frustrations we're having, like the offense is still in it there. They're going to figure that out too, because like, you know, this has been less than a week of this team together, this new team, more or less. And they're going to 
they'll figure it out. And I love this move. I really do think like they put them back up there in, in terms of like the American League talent. I wish they got another bullpen arm, but uh, on paper, they're, they're prime, man. I think they're ready to make a good run. But Julio, Marte made up for it by stealing third in the bottom of the ninth and setting up the game tying run, which he was stealing so, second or stealing. He stole third too, didn't he? No. Someone oh, wait. Third. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Didn't he steal third? Yeah. And he he was the I don't he, maybe he wasn't the game time run. If I'm maybe I have that wrong. Maybe he was the uh, the because uh, uh, it was three one. He Maybe he was the, the second, the three two run. But I yeah, I know he stole third for that for that run uh, and made up for it. <clears throat> um, I wanted to talk on on your point. I, I, I want to reiterate. Sorry for if you didn't listen last week. Um, we rationalize this deal for Lazardo because if you go and look at the contracts for all the pitchers on our starting rotation, plus the guys in um, the top guys in uh, in Triple A for us, Dalton Jeffries and blinking, but it doesn't matter. Oh, it's AJ, Puck, AJ Puck, AJ Puck, sorry, AJ Puck. Everybody's locked up till at least past next season. So we have them this season. We have them next season. After that, Chris Bassett, Sean and I, we got to figure it out. Either we move you or we keep you. After that, we have James Capullian until 2026. We have AJ Puck till 2027. We have Dalton Jeffries till 2026. We have Cole Irvin till 2026. We have Frankie Montas till 2026. Like, we're good. We have it. We have the, the established um, pitching talent to handle whatever we're going to go through for the next couple of years, whether it be a rebuild or another playoff run next year. So, you know, it's an unfortunate casualty, but, you know, it's it's the price of war. And right now we're at war. And and what do you know? We have a, a, a mountain of alt- artillery over there in over in the corner to 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 get us through the next few years. So. All right. It, Julio, sorry. Your winner. Uh, I, it's actually the team that I'm currently watching right now with their starting pitcher who just struck out 10 in his first game in this New Jersey, I'm going at the Dodgers, the Dodgers, uh, the Dodgers just really bulldozed over the national league with getting Max Scherzer and Trey Turner. Um, Scherzer was very rumored going to the Padres and that kind of fell through. He is now a Dodger and God, if it, it, when I was at the game last night and I was just looking at the Dodgers like lineup and it, uh, Trey Turner hasn't played yet because he's still out with COVID. He should be back probably by the weekend, I'd imagine. But it's like, whose spot does he even take this lineup? Are you going to have him take over Corey Seager, who's just come back from the IL? He's been playing well. No, you're going to have him take over for uh, Mookie was playing second last night, and he made an excellent play out there as well. Like, Corey, Cody Bellinger is going to be right on the bench for this team. You're going to have a former MVP playoff hero riding the bench for this team now. And now you're think about it. You're going to go into a five game series, seven game series against this Dodgers team where they're going to throw out Clayton Kershaw, Walker Bueller, Max Scherzer, and then Julio Urias. And also they have a former Cy Young winner in David Price, even though he has been as well like this, they, they've just really stacked the cards for their favor. Yeah. Um, they're very much, they're very much philosophy of baseball is what the Yankees think they are. Mm-hmm. Which are they? What the Yankees were? Let me rephrase that. Yeah, they're not this team anymore. I'm like, they're Yankee fans. But here's the thing about about what the Yankees were. Well, like, how many World Series do they have to show for that era when they were buying up players? They have won 2009. Well, if you want to count the Jeter, just Jeter's whole time. No, okay. no, no, because 90, 96, 99 through 2000 uh, for. 98 through 2000, those were homegrown guys. When they started That's buying true. guys up, it did. It no, but they work. had a lot of old, they had a lot of OGs there. You know, they had former Oakland Gate, Oakland Great, uh, Scott Spezio there. Or not Scott Spezio. Um, oh my God. Space now, it was his third baseman, the Yankees. Oh, like Wade Boggs was there. And like they had a bunch During of old time guys. The 90s era? Yes. Wade Boggs won a World Series in 96 and they had him. He was riding around Yankee Stadium on a horse after he just left the Scott. No. Oh, so he was the best player. Scott on their Brocious. Team. Scott Brocious. He was, he was the best you. player on their team, according to you. Wait, role, player, role players don't count. 
So, so Wade Box was the best player on their team. Is that what you're saying? Okay. But anyways, that's why, yes. that's why they called that team the core four because it was like the core four that went up through the ranks anyway. Yeah, but um, no, like I, the, the Dodgers, the Yan- Yankees think their philosophy is what the Dodgers are now. Yeah. And it's just, look, I get the hate. And because I live down here, I think both of us drink a little bit of the Dodger Kool-Aid because of, you know, we've, we've been down here for, I lived down here for eight years now. You've been here down here just as long, if not a little bit longer, seven, yeah. seven years. Yeah. And um, it's just, you're seeing the potential of baseball at its finest with this kind of thing. Whereas like the Lakers, different story now forever. Fuck the Lakers. Never. Though with like the Dodgers, it's like, you're seeing every time you're going to go out and to a Dodger game. Now you're going to see a hall of famer there. Yeah. It's like last night, like, dude, I got to see Mookie out there. I got to see, like, I was 30 feet away from, like, I saw Clayton Kershaw at the dugout, whatever. But um, I think it re- they really put themselves out in the lead of the National League in terms of the other teams. They're really, they're really just kind of stomped the foot on the Padres, especially mm-hmm. with, like, Tatis hurt. I think that we'll talk a little bit more about the Giants, I'm assuming. Uh, but I, I really like the team. Even though they gave up a couple of the top prospects, they're so deep farm-wise, they're going to be okay. Spoiler alert, I'm not talking about the Giants, so maybe you are, but I'm not. Anyway, uh, but don't you want to see Turner over at third because then you'll see uh, Trey Turner at, th- or at second because then you can see Trey- Turner and Turner at, at second and third? Well, the rumor couple, is Trey Turner is going to be A couple playing. of Turners cutting it up. That's what I'm talking about, huh, Dano? Hey. All right, who you got? Back, love it, uh, Are we doing a loser now or still a winner? Let's do. Let's go. Let's go winners. Oh, okay, okay. No, let's uh, let's go. Let's go back and forth. Let's go. Let's go losers. So uh, the losers are the Cubs fans. That's my loser. Um, end of an era, man, and that's tough. And and um, you know the the four guys that were the stars of their team that won them that World Series in 2016 and got them to an NLCS in 2015, and in, in a matter of two days they're all gone. And if I'm a Cubs fan, that's just brutal because when they won that first World Series, everybody was saying it, including me. Like, trust, trust me, this is this is not the first. This is not the first. You got Chris Bryant in his second year. You got Javi in his first year. You got not one, Rizzo not in his two. Year. You got, you know, it's just it, it's brutal, man. And I, I feel for Cubs fans. I we've been there. I know what it's like. 2014 was this for us, you know, when Moss and. Donison and fucking Cespedes and all those guys go. It's just it sucks, but um, yeah. So the biggest losers to me are the Cubs fans for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I the worst part is it didn't have to be this way. No, I think all these and it sound all a lot of these guys are pretty heartbroken about getting traded. Chris Bryant, they showed a clip of him in the dugout of like him like crying when he found out because like. Think about it, man. Think about like they think about being a part of that team where you broke a hundred plus year old like World Series drought. You're yep. always going to hold that team to heart, and to kind of see them all go out the way they did, even though I think they're all in better situations that they were beforehand. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's just like their ownership has really fallen to shits. The fact that like Theo Epstein was like, "Yo, I'm gone. I don't want to be a part of this." Just shows like I feel like things are going to be getting worse for the Cubs, then they are getting better. And it just sucks. It's like Cubs fans are some of the most loyal people you'll ever meet. Um, you know, shout out to or my guy, Arvin Tabula over there. Um, and it, it just sucks because like they've been through enough. They've been yeah. through enough and they got the world series, but it's just like, it seems like they're just going to be going back to bad times again. And here's the thing though, bright side, um, stay positive towards the end of that conversation. Rizzo, Brian, Javi, Schwarber, all those guys, they are still forever going to be legends in Chicago. Always. Their names are going to be in the rafters. They're never going to buy a beer for the rest of their life in that city. Like they are at the end of the day, they are still absolute legends and they deserve to be because that was a hell of a fought world series. And yeah. So RIP Cubs fans. um, Good luck next year. All right, Julio, who's your loser? What the hell are you doing, what, Rockies? What, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. You held on to Trevor. Like, you have Trevor Story, oh, pending free agent. Man. You have Charlie Blackman. Contract is going to be coming up soon. You have John Gray, pending free agent. 
You didn't move any of them. You like to help rebuild your team. What the hell are you doing? They just and now trade now. Trevor Story doesn't even like want to play at all right now and just sitting out. What are you doing? That's Did, like. Do you think they didn't have service? You think it's maybe I, I haven't been to Colorado, but I would imagine. But um, it, oh. it just seems like the asking price for Trevor Story was insane because it, it sounded like the Yankees were very committed to try to make a move for him. It didn't happen. Um, multiple teams are trying to get Trevor story. It's like, they just weren't willing to budge on it. And yeah. it's just so bizarre to me that in the, this last off season, they traded Arenado after tra- find, signing this fat extension. And the, the return has been actually decent so far on paper. I know like Austin Gomber was like one of the main guys was a part of it. And he's actually been like a pretty solid pitcher out there for the Rockies, but it's like, you're, Look, you're you're not going to compete against the Dodgers. You're not going to compete against the Padres. You're not compete against the Giants, and maybe you're going to be fighting with the Diamondbacks for fourth. So, like at this point, why not just blow up your team and send it all out? Why not do it? And they didn't. And that's what the thing I'm so confused about. Why just they didn't do it? And what the with what the Padres and the Dodgers are doing, like they're not going to compete with them for, for the next few years, like. So even more reasons, like start building a team for three or four years from now when like kind of, you know, the era just starts to change a little bit. Yeah. I don't, I mean, what the fuck, man? Like, I, I don't know. I mean, look, I'm sure Rockies fans are happy because they still get to keep watching Trevor story, but your team's still going to be pathetic. You're going to, you're not going to be watching for much longer. Enjoy these last two months. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right, Julio. Right. Positive. Let's go happy. Who's you, who are you happy for? Who won? Um, I'm going to save the obvious one for you, and I want to go with one because I thought this, this team was interesting. Um, And if you don't say the obvious one, I'll just say what the obvious one is after you. Um, The Phillies. The Phillies were underwhelmingly, like, they made, like, really good moves. I didn't realize it until I started looking at the free agency tracker. So they got Eddie Galvis, Kyle Gibson, and Ian Kennedy. Um, I don't have their place in the standings right now, but the NL East is pathetic. We've talked about this multiple times in this podcast. They definitely could could potentially make a run um, in that division. Um, But, I mean, wow. I, I mean, th- that's pretty impressive. Like, and they kind of really hit the needs that they had. Like, uh, uh, yeah, really under the radar. And we talked about Kyle Gibson probably being the best starter besides Scherzer, Scherzer available on the market, and they get him. Um, same with Ken- Ian Kennedy being one of the better closers. Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I thought they deserved some credit. I actually had the Phillies as my number two winner. Besides the Dodgers. Yeah, I love both of those moves. I think just really shoring up that rotation. If they can, if they're only a game and a half out of first behind the Mets. The Mets have been, uh, the Mets are four or six in their last 10. And um, yeah, the, the Phillies, Bryce Harper's actually low key been playing really good this year. Uh, I know he's been injured, but like his, his like stat lines been pretty nice so far. And if they can make it into a division series, and they're going to throw out a three gamer or at best of five of Aaron Nola, a Zach Wheeler, Kyle Gibson. You're in great shape, man. I think you'll be in really dude, good shape. They're only a game and a half behind the Mets. Like it's yeah. totally possible. Now you're going to have Ian Kennedy to kind of shut that, down I the team for them. Out, so I apologize, but I did yeah. say that and yeah, you did zone out, but that's okay. I mean, I was, I was trying to load the standings and it, it, you know, it made no sense because you set them. So I didn't have to load them. Yeah. I, I honestly, I'm glad you brought that up. I really love that move. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I, the Phillies have been a really weird team this year. Uh, they're significantly worse away than they are at home. And um, who knows this, maybe this will be the thing that put them over the top. This division is very winnable. Uh, my next winner here, uh, I'm going to give some, I feel like, look, Giants fans, we shit on you all the time. You deserve it. You deserve the stereotype of the Patagonia who's just going off there, coming off of their shift at WeWork and going over wearing their Allbirds. Also, I do love Allbirds. I do have a pair and also have a Patagonia jacket. Besides the point, um, I think they made a move that made them significantly better with getting Chris Bryant. 
um, the biggest thing I was kind of, when the move went down, I was kind of questioning like, why would they make that move when Evan Longoria, who's having a pretty solid year before he got hurt, he's going to be coming back from the aisle I think pretty he started, soon. I think he starts rehab like tomorrow. Yeah. It's like, why would you make that move when he's pretty close to coming back? Because um, Chris Bryant's been playing a little bit of everywhere this year. He was playing some yeah. center field for the Cubs. He's been playing some right field. Um, and now they're going to do experiment with them. And I'm not going to lie, man. Look, I'm, I've softened up a little bit more. <laughs> was in the that Giants. your dog? Was that your dog? Yeah. Shout out to Ray Mundo over here. Um, you're not going to you're you're give her a, or give him a, a, a cameo. Like it's her do girl. EVL t- her, uh, cameo, well, she like just, do EVL t- she just laid in the bed. I can't, I can't, she does have an A's bandana. Okay, so that's okay. fantastic. All right. Keep going. But, um, um, he looks great in the giant jersey. I'll say that. Like it looks really cool seeing him out there. Um, uh, I wish they, in terms of like a baseball fan, what I thought they could have done, I, I think they could have done better with like another back end starter, mm-hmm. but they did bring back Tony Watson who had some pretty solid years as a giant when he was like one of the only key players during those weird post world series teams. Um, I don't know if it's going to be enough to really withhold like the charge of the Dodgers, but I think they made themselves a better team at the end of the day. And they're going to bring somebody in who is Chris Bryant. You, I've tried trading for him, for him from you multiple times in fantasy league. And you're like, no man, he's been so good. And he has been, he's below P having a great year with the, he was having a great year at the Cubs. Um, he's having a real big bounce back after last year. I think it's really going to shore up that lineup. And now the giants are going to be having Tommy Lestella is going to be coming back pretty soon. Um, they're getting healthy. There's a potential that Joey Bart is going to be coming up to at least provide a little bit more, um, to give like Buster some days off, Brandon Belt on assignment AAA. They're really starting to shore themselves up. This like old guy softball team is um, really starting to click. And I think Chris Bryant's going to be there to kind of finalize things. And, you know, Giants, good for you guys. You And, and plus, they gave up barely anything to get them. Look, bro, don't take out your frustrations with our fantasy league and not trading on me. I traded with you this season. I'm like one of the one people who actually did trade with you. So don't. And I think that was a very even trade. Yeah, it worked out great for us. Just my team just overall sucks. Anyway. Um, um, yeah. So uh, the look, I, I, I didn't say that the Giants aren't on my winners list because they're like, that wasn't a good move. Hey, look, there he is. Finally. Or, he, or she, sorry. Finally. Finally making an appearance uh, for the YouTube listeners. Um, Say hi, Ray. That's Julio's dog. Hey. Anyway, um, uh, I'm not. I'm not hating on it being like it, it's not a. It's it wasn't a good move. Like they they made a good move. Like, but are they are are they one of like the top winners of this deadline? No. But did they, yeah, they they did well. They were a winner. They the like success successful move, and they are better for it. Um, yeah, I thought the same thing. Like you can play outfield. One of my friends who's a Giants fan, Jesse, he was saying like, because I didn't know what Longoria's situation was. So I was like, why, like, why would they make this move? Like, and he's like, Longoria's coming back soon. I'm like, oh, Longoria's coming back soon. This is news to me. And he's like, yeah, why can't it's, Chris Bryant could play second if he wants to. And I was like, I don't know if he'd play second, but he definitely could play outfield because he's played outfield this season. So we'll see where he goes. He hit a home run in his first game, which is pretty fucking cool. So nice. Shout out to him. A uh, couple things, actually, speaking of home runs. One, I got the Dodgers game on. Correa just hit a home run off of Joe Kelly, really tried to pimp up. They're losing by four. But two, all of the ex-Cubs hit a home run within their first or second game. Yeah, that was with their new cool. teams. Was yeah. cool. All right, let's get some negative negativity here. Who's your loser? All right, I'm torn between two, but I... Th- <sighs> hmm. Which one do I want to go with? They're both AL Central teams. All right, Julio, you pick a one or two. No, it'll be the one I pick. Two. Two. All right, so the White Sox. Um, oh! you, you gave up Nick Madrigal for a rental premier setup man. For a rental premier setup man. I don't know how bad their bullpen is. It must be that bad because you gave up Nick Madrigal a great second baseman, potentially going to be one of the best second basemen in baseball in a couple of years. Very young. He look, he had an injury this year. It's unfortunate, but like, I mean, he was one of the best players on your team for 
Craig Kimball for two months and you already have Liam Hendricks, like maybe you're the back in your bullpen is that unreliable that you needed that. But I don't know, man, that's a loss to me. Now they're going to have to figure out their second base situation for the next few years. I guess so, maybe, I mean, they have depth. They can figure it out. But. So they did trade for Cesar Hernandez, uh, who was like their second base for the Indians, which like, look, if you just need somebody to fill in a spot, who's like above average. Great. That's the way to go. Yeah. Um, so I, what I did have the white talks down and then I erased it because like, I think that's given up way too much, especially for a crosstown way rival. And then I read, you're going to feel bad about this too. Um, so Craig Kimbrell's daughter has a heart condition Ugh. and a part of the reason he oh wanted to be traded to the God. White Sox is like, he wanted to still stay in Chicago. Ugh. At least close to him. Why didn't Sorry, they, man. why don't they, why don't they make that more newsworthy? When Steven Piscotty got traded, everybody knew the reason why he got traded. Now you're it's, I think it's like a little asshole. more, I think it's a little more of a sensitivity because it's children. And you, you know, you don't really want to bring Ugh. that stuff up, but yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, he could have gone to. There's not a lot of good teams up in the Midwest right now. Never mind. Yeah, but that that being said, <laughs> I think the if look, if you if if you want to take the personal reasons out, um, I think giving up that much where I don't think Nick magical is going to be too far off from becoming an everyday second baseman and becoming a really good guy yeah. for a guy who, if you want to set up, man, there was a ton of available credit. I know uh, the, like the blue Jays had picked up Joaquin Soria and all that. Um, but it's like, yeah, I just, I think that's a very, very hefty price. And coming from a somebody who has a, from a fan base who gave up one of their old price prospects, if they want to make the argument saying like, "Hey, timeline," but it's like the the White Sox are super young. This is a, still a pretty young team offensively on paper, at least. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I I I applaud the teams to make this deal move for the family matter, for the personal matter, for Craig Kimball. That's honestly a fantastic thing to do. But from a baseball fan perspective, um, it's if this doesn't work out for them this year, they're really going to hate it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I have nothing left to add. Uh, oh, I'll uh, I'll add my. Uh... Obvious winner was um, the Yankees, but I'm not sure if they're winners or losers because they didn't address their issue, really. I didn't get to say my loser yet. Oh, is it the Yankees? I was going to say the Yankees because, oh, I'll, I'll, look, you know what? Because of that, I get, and I'll just say a little blip about the Yankees. No, just take the Yankees. Just take the Yankees. No, because um, there's two other if teams I really want to focus There's okay. two other teams I really want to focus on, but I'm going to give a little blip about the Yankees. Okay. Uh, cool. You got more pop in your lineup, but the problem with that lineup is they don't have enough athleticism out there. So you're going to add uh, Joey Gallo is a great outfielder, but he's not going to be somebody who's, if I was the Yankees, I really just would put as much as possible to get Starlin Marte because he would have been insane out there mm-hmm. more. He would have been more valuable for them than I think Rizzo and Star Marte's Gallo would have been like a beautiful, he's just a dude. That guy's man. Jack. That guy's Can we talk jack. about that for a split second? Yeah. Like, like when he first came up seconds on it. Yo, that guy is fucking ripped. Wow. Yeah. I was shocked. <laughs> like it shows this. through the uniform. Wow. Impressive. Good for you, man. Anyways, loser. Um, Angels. Look, you have a lot of expiring contracts this year. And I'm sure if John was on here, he would agree with this. And the only guy you gave up was Andrew Heaney, who got lit up in his first start as a Yankee, <laughs> which hilarious. But... um. A lot of these guys, so like we've talked about this before, where it's like Jose Iglesias is a branding free agent. Uh, I think Rafael Marcel Iglesias is a branding free agent. And there's a couple of the guys that are like, you could have easily sent them out to get something at least for maybe not next year, but a couple of years down the line. And they did it. I thought they were going to be a lot more active on the trade deadline. Uh, we just got the news today that Anthony Radon is done for the year. He had hip yeah. surgery. So, you know, Best of luck. Hopefully you can come back to the player he was. Um, Mike Trout has been playing. It's pretty much like, the, I don't know if you've seen the tweet where it was like, oh, Mike Trout just hit his third home run of the ball 
game. And Shohei Otani just did something that hasn't happened since 1912 by Bags McBlinaland or something like that. The Angels lose 8-3. I did not like see that's that, yeah. no, somebody was like, yeah, it's like every time the angels just do this ridiculous thing. It's the same thing. Somebody repost yeah. that tweet where it's just like, oh my God, like this. Oh yeah. They still lost. And to me, it's like, they're not going to, they're not going to be in a playoff contention. No. They're not going to do anything this year. Unfortunately, like, look, even if you're in catch of the A's, which they're not going to be because they're still behind Seattle, you're still going to have to, Try to go past Toronto, and Seattle, and New has York, some really and good Tampa. Young talent coming up too, like some really good young yes. talent. So to me, I'm just like you have a lot of these guys where I think they could have been super valuable rental players, and you didn't get the most out of it. So that's why I say they're a loser. I think they could have been more active on the deadline and helped other teams out and try to see if something can come through, and they didn't. Uh, I was looking away. I'm still listening to you. I'm sorry. I just the USA game just started, so I'm uh, or it started a little bit ago, so I'm just watching. Oh my god, they're down 21 to 16 to Australia in the semifinals. Okay, um, so let's wrap it up, Julio. Uh, Wait, are we got? Are we get one more each? No, no, let's wrap it up. Screw it. Uh, oh, we can do one more each. All right, all right, here we go. My last winner. We'll do it live. My last winner. Oh shit, I don't have any more because I said the Yankees already. No, no, no. Give you, give me your argument for the Yankees. I mean, they're, I'm very dude, curious. I mean, they're kind of winners because they got the best first baseman available. They got one of the best hitters available. Um, so like I get it. Like, you know, like it 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 it, it makes sense to me. I, I I understand um uh like what they did, but they didn't address their issue, which is starting pitching, kind of Andrew Heaney, kind of like barely. They didn't address their major issue. If, if I'm Brian Cashman, I'm going all in on Scherzer. I'm going all in on Kyle Gibson. I'm going all in on these premier starters. <laughs> Danny Duffy, at least, would have been a better too. Going all in on these top these top tier starters at the deadline to try and like to try and like resolve this issue. But no, instead they get more bats. It's just like I don't know what Andrew Cashman's like people around him is scouting or his analytics department is telling him. They're just like, oh no, more offense is way better. Like what? No, like no, some, no, especially not this year, especially not this year. So it's just, a um, I think Rizzo is a fan. T- so something I've, um, we, we've talked about with the Schlatters offline is just like the Yankees just don't seem like a fun team. Like when you no. see like the Boston's dugout, they have a, they seem like such a really rambunctious bunch of having had a lot of fun. Yeah. And I think bringing in, um, like Anthony Rizzo, that's going to change it up a lot. I think it's going to keep things a lot really loose. We kind of know his history as a player where he's, you know, Frederick. Yeah. Come back, Frederick. Like one of the yeah. best moments of the year. Uh, so, yeah, I, I applaud them for that. So I don't know if it's going to be enough, but. No, it's not. It's I'm telling you it's not. And because, look, I, I, I know the Rays, they made a few minor moves, not like the big flashy ones. But that team just has so much depth, especially in the farm system, that they're like ready to bring up that it's going to work. And then Boston is like a train that just doesn't stop. I don't know how they are that as good as they are. Like they have just a lot of above average players, except for like maybe Xander Bogarts is probably a star. I feel like Rafael Devers was two years ago, but he fell off a little bit. He's still good. Don't get me wrong. He's still good. But he like, was an all star this year. Okay. So it being an all star means, means that you're a star. I mean, you're just like this major star. I mean, Rafael Devers is probably the best third baseman in the American League right now. Let's look at his stats. You're going to feel really dumb. Am I, though? Am I going to look dumb? Rafael Devers. Oh, wow. He's only 24 years old. That's pretty tight. Average 285. 27 home runs. Wow. That's a lot. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> last year, I feel like last year didn't play so well. I yeah, guess it's only the Red 60 Sox games last year, 263 and 11 home runs. Okay, cool. Uh, so Anyways, they have two stars, uh, but like my- the rest of their guys are just above average, like good guys that just get the job done. Like Hunter Renfro yeah. just fucking smacks home runs. Obviously. Um, uh, wow. DH. JD Martinez. JD Martinez is great. Um, but you know, it's hard PK has it been DH's awesome. Star. Christian Vasquez is cool. Yeah. Um, and, they got uh, Kyle Schwarber now. We'll see how that matters. They but. do, but it's just kind of, it's just weird. Like they, they just feel like a kind of a ragtag team a little bit, but 
Anyway, either yeah, way, it doesn't tag, matter. Bunch of adventures. They're they're a train that doesn't stop. They're like yeah. they're like the giants yeah. this year. They're a train that's not stopping. If I was again, we brought this up multiple times. I would have put money on them to win the World Series. At least to go oh, yeah. to the World Series match, especially with like Chris Sale coming back. Even though this is supposed to be like a you saying a win for the Yankees, I still think Boston's gonna. I but I also had them as up. a loser, so just take what I'm saying for with a grain of salt because I didn't have a fourth, and you took my four, you took my. So third I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you mine right now. You ready? Yeah. In the same division, Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, Jose Barrios coming through in that rotation. So now you're gonna bring it out rotate. Oh. A late trade, too. That yes. was a very late trade. Yes. So now you have a rotation of Jose Barrios, Jim Ryu, um, Alex Manoa has been pretty solid as a rookie, and then Robbie Ray, who's just kind of had a you know rejuvenation come up from Arizona. Yeah. They look, they've looked really good. They shorted the bullpen. They got Brad Hand from the Nationals. Uh, and now, like, George Springer is healthy out there. They're arguably like the most fun team in the American league. Like they're like the Padres of the American league in a sense that like a lot of really cool personalities, a lot of just really badass I would agree baseball with that. players and a lot of young talent. That's like just fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, I don't know if you saw the picture the other day, but Vladdy Guerrero had the day off and they just taped him to the bench that day. Cause they're like, you're not playing. They just like duct taped <laughs> him to the bench, but no, I think it, in that division where the depth of the Rays, the power of the Yankees, and then just the kind of the scrappiness of the Red Sox, you're going to need those guys are going to put some outs. And Jose Barrios is actually in a much better year than we thought he was on paper. And I'm, I think that was one of the best destinations possible for him. I could, I could still see the Rays making a run at the division. They're only, I have it in front of me as you hear my drink cladding around. Uh, what are you drinking over there? Because normally you just drink beer. I actually, so uh, last weekend, two weekends ago, we went to Hollywood, Hollywood Forever Cemetery, watched Pulp Fiction. Great nice. time. Still holds up. A little problematic, but still really good. Uh, but every, there's a... Every Quentin Tarantino movie is a little problematic these days. You're not wrong. But uh, we went to a bottle shop over at the row near downtown LA. I can't remember the name of it, but they have like this big leader of like margaritas that like oh, serves cool. yeah so i'm drinking a nice margarita on the rocks and it's quite delicious nice. anyways uh they're seven back from the rays but there's still a lot of time left i could see them still making a move especially with these moves they made to kind of sharp so blue jays i'm rooting for you guys i hope they're in they're a really exciting team i think they're a really good team for baseball chris last loser let's go so my last loser, since I forgot that we're doing three, is going to be the other um, uh, AL uh, Central team, uh, the Twins. Um, the Twins were in the playoffs last year. They lost the first round. That's unfortunate. This year, it's a train wreck. No signs of turning that around. They do nothing. They do nothing. Literally nothing. They don't sell a single player, and they have good players to sell off. Byron Bucks. Just old Barrios. They... Touche. They did sell Barrios. And Nelson Cruz. Um, oh, fuck. That's right. They did sell Nelson Cruz. But, okay, but, so if you're going to do that, why not get rid of everybody else? Like, come on. Exactly. Dude, what exactly. are you doing? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, it's just like, I don't know what they're doing over there. It's just like, it, it, I understand that you have this curse and you're, like, determined to, like, to, to win, like, you know, a playoff series. But, like, I don't know. It, it feels like when they, when they have a good team, they don't go all, all in. Kind of a lot like the A's, minus 2014 in this year. They don't go all in, and then when they have like, I don't know. It's just and then and then when when it time when it's time to like turn turn it over and get get it done get like change out the new regime and like you know try and build new prospects and stuff like that and better your odds by getting more prospects. They don't do that. They had Joe Maurer for like 20 years. They had like uh, Justin Morneau for so. I mean, it's just like I don't. I just don't know what Juan their Santana. mentality is. Like yeah. that, Juan Santana. They just like you. You. It's like they just they want to. I, I don't know. Maybe they just want to sell tickets and they want to put have a poster board for their team. But I, I and but if you want to win championships, that's not how you. That's not how you do it. I don't, I just don't yeah, get, it seems like they're not. It. They're very similar to the A's in that they're mm-hmm. not in the, um, just tank to tank kind yeah. of boat. But it's like this is the this is the kind of team that you tank. Josh Donaldson with this contract now should not be on this team. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, Byron Buxton 
I, I don't hate them for keeping him because when he is healthy, he's been pretty electric these last couple of years. But like Max Kepler, you easily could have found a home for him. Max Kepler, um, yeah. Tyler, Taylor Rogers, one of the Rogers, whatever Rogers is at the twins right now, he, you easily could have found a home from him and got some pieces back. And it's kind of the same thing. What we, what I just brought up with the angels is like, you could have been a little more aggressive and you really could have rebuilt your farm system with some of the pieces that you have there. Because the reality is the white Sox are going to be good for a few years. Um, the Indians will, or sorry, the guardians are not going to be going anywhere. There you go. And the tigers are actually looking like a much better team than a lot of people thought they were. And the reality is the twins are going to be kind of stuck in the bottom for a little bit. And they should have been a little more aggressive trying to get whatever they can to kind of help that out. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's yours? Uh, my last loser. I don't want to say too much about it. We're running a little bit over, but uh, the St. Louis Cardinals. So they traded John Lester, they traded for John Lester and they gave up John Gant. And the reason I bring up John Gant is when we did our NLS, our central preview podcast and Ronnie was on here, Ronnie was high on John Gant. He's like, Oh yeah, watch out for this guy. You know, he could be a potential. And then they shipped him out for John Lester. And if you're going to trade for John Lester at the trade deadline, you're going to have a bad time. That's all I'm going to say. I think it's funny because the two guys that they traded for are just like so old. Like, Who's the other guy again? J Hap. What are you like? What are you guys doing? I just, you know, I, I, that's what I'm wondering. I thought it was so they weren't on my list, but I thought about it because I was like, this would be so funny to make fun of these guys for being like the boomer team. Like, all right, and it's we're like getting, they have we're a, all they the have boomers. A, they have a pretty good offense. They're not boomers, I, by the way. They're but Dynexes, it's, but, yeah. but it's just like, what do you? What, what what does this do? Why why would you, you're gonna you replace Jack in? Clarity with these guys? Good luck. I mean, ja, yeah, Jack Clarity's been out. It's just like what you, whatever. Anyways, yeah. Uh, and either way, it's gonna be a very exciting last two months of baseball, to say the least. Yeah. But Chris, we've been going on for too long. Uh, let's talk about this next upcoming series. They're gonna be going. Yeah. To, we have the A's Ladies against gentlemen, the Texas those are Rangers. Winners and losers, by the way. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, the A's against the Texas Rangers. Julio Reynoso's first home A's game in three and a half years. Very excited. Friday night, I'll be seeing Mr. Swervin Irvin himself in person. Dalton Jeffries is going on Saturday. Chris Bassett is going on Sunday. Well, the, no, the, hold on. Bob Melvin didn't commit to Dalton Jeffries on Saturday because Caprillion could be ready. Well, that kind of changed some of my thoughts a little bit later, but yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just letting you know. So I don't want to promise the listeners that Dalton Jeffries is going to be pitching on Saturday because it could be cap could be back. That's I remember he said that in the pre, the post game press conference yesterday. That okay, yeah, good to know. Thanks for bringing that up. Uh, and then they'll be heading out to Cleveland for playing against our maybe the last time they're playing the Cleveland Indians. Uh, and during that series, you're going to have Frankie Montas or Sean and I, Frankie Montas, Cole Irvin. Now, Chris, please give me your player of the week. I'll leave you the obvious one, and I'm going to take um, the also obvious one. I'm going to take Jan Gomes for that fucking dope-ass home run that you hit, uh, three-run homer, uh, a couple days ago, and then also coming up big today uh, with what was the game-tying RBI single? Yes, game-tying. Game-tying. Um, you've done amazing things for this team. You've given uh, Murph some great rest. I, his at bats have already been better. I've already seen progress in them from just getting some rest. He's great, you know, more versatility in the lineup. Um, he's been clutch, and and you can tell his experience is really weighing on the team. Um, so I give it a big A plus for Jan Gomes, um, and I give it also a big A plus to Josh Harrison for just being a amazing presence off the bench because he's so much fun. You could tell he's enjoying baseball again. So, you know, I was going to choose Jan Gomes, which is that was my, I was ready to prepare. I was prepared for you to say Marte, but since yeah, you left him to say Starling Marte. What an amazing start to wow. going to a new team. Uh, he went eight for 24, a double, a home run, an RBI, five steals, count of one, two, three, four, five, three walks and three strikeouts. Uh, I think once this offense kind of figures out, you got they're the kind green of. Light. Yes. Starling, uh, you got the green light. Starling, you got the green light. Jeez. Like Roxanne, get it? It's put on the red light. I know, but I change up the lyrics in order to 
accommodate the baseball reference. Fun fact about that song. So in the beginning, you know, the, with the with the guitar after, yeah, 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 yeah. You hear, and then you hear like a piano in the beginning, just go, boom, and then just ha ha ha. So during the recording of that tape, uh, Sting accidentally sat on their piano. Nice. And play that, and he just laughed. And they're like, you know what? That was such a good take of that song. We're just, Classic I love, dude. Sting. I love, I love the police. Like the police are like, the kick ass. Anyways, Classic um, Sting. yes, class. Oh, way to go. Anyways, Starling Marte has been excellent. He's really been lit up this offense. He's really been a spark plug for what this team kind of needed. I hope it kind of revigorates the rest of this team, especially like Ramon, who he's been really in. I don't know if it's been the inconsistency he hit. He did hit the double today to kind of get things started in the ninth, but it just seems like his at bats are just like, go big or go home. You're either going to get, and and that's kind of really been the philosophy of this team over the last few years. It's either you're going to get a big at bat. You're going to get your base set out of him, or he's going to strike out. There's no between. And it was great to see at least today against Melanson, he actually did have a pretty long at bat. I think he, the at bat went like 10, 11 pitches to kind of be like that. I'm hoping a lot of that Marte factors leading into there. So kudos. I hope these two guys, along with Josh Harrison, really are the guys who are going to really teach these guys and push them over their edge to be this team that I think we all think they should be. So, yeah. I agree. Um, all right. So last week's uh, essential tailgate to all the weeks uh, for Julio, it was Jed Lowry. Went five for 20, had one home run, five RBIs, four walks, four Ks. I'd say that's pretty good. I thought, I felt like he, oh, I think it's really good. Though. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I, take it. 250 strikeouts but with that productivity. A bit, it's a little bit like, you know, kind of alarms at the end, but no, like I think it was pretty good. Uh, mine was Starlin Marte because it was too hard to pass up. Um, one of the players of the week, eight for 14, as Julio said, a double, a home run, RBI, five stolen bases, four, three walks. We already said the stats, doesn't matter. So, starting Marte was dope. So, good job paddling back for both of us. All right, Julio, who's your essential tailgate tool of the week? Sean Murphy, you're going to be getting consistent oh, day offs now. Um, because you brought up this point up earlier, I think. Aramis Garcia was not really providing the stability you needed yeah. as an everyday catcher. Unfortunately, like it, there were flashes of it, but it just was not there enough. Now you have a guy there with Jan Gomes. And if you think about last season and, you know, it, it was such a kind of sample size, you don't really know what it comes out of it, but Murph really performed at his best when he was, at the end of the season, last month, September, when Chappie went down, he pretty much picked up the productivity behind the plate for her at the plate for him. Yeah. And I think now that you're going to have a consistent day offs for him and Bo Mel doesn't have to rely on playing him all the time because you have somebody who is a veteran, who's been playing really well in that position. When Murph is at like is playing you should be expecting some pretty good productivity out of him. So this is going to be a pretty good test for this first week. Sean Murphy, I believe in you. Let's do it. And he's going to be playing in Cleveland. He's a, he's from Ohio. Uh, shout out to my good friend, Greg Feingold from Ohio as well. I can say that as well. Um, Greg. Yeah. You met him. You met him. You met him at the Cousin A's Greg. Angels. Just kidding. Yes. Uh, I can't wait for succession to come I back. Know, Tangent. Thing. But um, uh, no, I think it's going to have a little more blood going in playing at a hometown series. Sean oh. Murphy, you're my essential tool of the week. Okay. Uh, mine is going to be Jed Lauer because now he's hitting the fourth spot, which is what we kind of predicted. Uh, we thought that um, uh, Olsen was going to um, stay at three and then um, get a more reliable hitter at fourth as opposed to Mitch Moreland or remote or I don't know, one of these other guys um at at um at that spot and he's been playing pretty well i I, we need him to keep it up because go back to it again we can't keep relying we can't just rely on the new guys to be getting us run getting us hits and getting people on base when we need them we need to bring those runners home jed has been more or less reliable in the past so far this season with that i want him to be more reliable this week um you have an amazing 
one, two punch right there with Mark Hanna and, um, uh, uh, oh my God, Starlin Marte. Um, look, Olsen's going to have his days. He's going to be better than most, be- better most days than not because he's an MVP candidate this year, but with his inconsistency, we need Mr. Consistency, consistency in Jed Lowry to pick up the slack and bring those guys home when we need to. So mine is Jed Lowry. Who Love it, man. I have to pee really bad. So we got to end this podcast. So Absolutely. thank you everybody for listening. Uh, Julio, I'll let you do the, the end of the, the pod uh, shout outs or whatever. Um, yeah. Make sure to give us a follow, please Plugs. on Twitter at the town Telegate. Make sure you are following us also on our, our YouTube channels, whereas where we get your local podcast, make sure to give some love to around the diamond for all the great stuff they do. And don't and forget, ladies be- and gentlemen, I'm making this easier for you. I'm going to break up our segments on YouTube so you don't have to watch the whole thing. You can only, you only, if you only want to watch big list, big three, you can watch big three, 20 minutes. If you only want to watch A's news, you can watch A's news, 10 minutes. I'm making it easy for you. So yeah, no excuses. Um, but also if you are going to be at the Coliseum on Friday night, yo, feel free to hit us up, hit me up um, at the town tag eight. You can DM me. Tag us on Twitter. I'm more than welcome. Come say what's up. Give some love to the people. Listen to us. Yeah. So yeah, That'd be fucking dope. Take some pictures. Post them on. Yeah. On take Twitter. some pictures. Post on the gram. I'll try. I'll try to keep or on the Twitter. I'll try to keep an eye out for as many people as I can. Uh. All right, folks. Thank you for listening. Last but not least, Julio. Let's go, Oakland. Oh yeah.